Shalom, it's Izzy, your Hebrew teacher here, and this is Hebrew Chapters with Holy Language Institute. I have some good news and some bad news for you today. Which would you like me to tell you first? The bad news? Okay, I'll tell you the bad news first. The bad news is that we are reading Exodus chapter 6 today. Now, that isn't bad news in and of itself. But the bad news is about half of this chapter is a bunch of Hebrew names that pretty much nobody names their kids anymore. So unless you're a real Hebrew nerd like me, you may not be too excited about reading those Hebrew names. That's the bad news, unless you're a Hebrew nerd. The good news is I'm going to give you a bonus today. Instead of only reading Hebrew, Exodus chapter 6 in Hebrew, we are going to read Exodus chapter 6 and 7. So you're sure to get some good content in there. Some other good news I have for you is that we are going to be unpacking the Hebrew word for prophet in the sense of a a spiritual spokesperson, not in the sense of prophet making money. I think you are going to be very fascinated to discover that prophet is a simple word in Hebrew, and it's also a very big word. It has several Hebrew words that it's related to that give us a much fuller sense of what it means. So let's pray, and we'll get started with reading Exodus chapters 6 and 7. Thank you, Elohim God, for this opportunity, this opportunity to read your word, to read your word in the original language in which it was written. Thank you for Hebrew. Thank you that we can come to know you more clearly and more closely through it. Thank you for your Ruach, your spirit, always available to help us out, uh, quicken our minds, help us to understand concepts, to lock the things that we're learning into our long-term memory. I pray that our learning session today would be meaningful, would be useful, and would be fun. Thank you. Thank you that we can call you our Father. Thank you that we can learn about you and grow in our relationship with you through your Spirit, through Yeshua the Messiah, and through studying your language right now. Amen. So we'll begin reading. Actually, there's one verse here. Exodus chapter 6, verse 1 in the Torah portion, Vayera, or sorry, in the Torah portion, Shemot. Then we'll be jumping right into the Torah portion, Vayera. So, we will begin with Exodus chapter 6, verse 1, breaking this down word by word, giving you the three-letter roots. I may be moving at a slightly quicker clip than usual because we have a little more content to cover, what with doubling up the chapters for this uh, study. If you don't know how to read Hebrew yet, I encourage you to check out the 40 Lessons of Hebrew Quest at holylanguage.com, which will get you reading the scriptures in Hebrew, much like this, but at a more beginner level. Va yomel, verbal root there is amal, and it means to say. Va yomel, and said. That's a frequently used root, so I'm not going to be breaking it down for you every time we encounter it in this reading. Who said? Someone whose name is spelled yod Hey vav Hey. When Jewish people encounter this name, they say generally say Adonai, which is Hebrew for my master or lord. It's the name of God. Most scholars believe this name was originally pronounced Yahweh. And if you pronounce God's name as Yahweh when reading the Holy Scriptures, I hope you do it reverently. I hope you do it in appropriate contexts. And I hope you do that sensitively to the people that may be around you. For instance, if you have traditional Jewish people around you, I hope you don't do that. Uh, I'll just be reading this as Adonai here. So I'll read it as Adonai and you, um, you read it as whatever your tradition Maybe. And said Adonai, El to Moshe, Moses, Ata, now, Tire, verbal root, Ra'a, to see, Tire, 
you will see a shell what a essay verbal root asa to do act or make a essay i will do le faro to pharaoh key for the yad uh, with a hand your yad is your hand chazaka uh, chazak is strong here it's in the feminine form yad chazaka a strong hand uh, the new american standard translation renders this phrase as under compulsion because that's the sense as we can see in the next couple words yishalchem verbal root shalach to send it's actually the verbal root for an apostle in Hebrew. An apostle is a shaliach, someone who is shalacht, sent. Here it's talking about Pharaoh shalaching, sending the people of Israel out of Egypt. Yishalchem. He will send them uviad, and with a hand, or literally in a hand, chazaka, strong. Yigashem. So he won't just shalach, send them. He will garash, them. What does garash mean? To drive out. Me also. From his Eretz. From his land or country. And that is the end of that parasha. That Torah portion. Let's keep reading on into parashat Vayera. Vayidabel. Verbrut daval to speak or communicate, Elohim, God, referring to him as the Almighty, the, the, the mightiest one, one with all the power, El, to Moshe, Vayomel, and he said, Elav, to him, Ani, I, Adonai, there's God's name again, Vaera, so there's the key word that this portion is named after, see? Vaera, what does vaera mean? Verbal root ra'a, to see. Vaera, and I was seen by, or I appeared, appeared, El, to Avraham, Abraham. El, to Yitzhak, Isaac. Vael, and to Yaakov. Jacob, B, L, Shaddai. Basically, that simply means he appeared as El Shaddai. Here, B is in, literally. El Shaddai has the sense of Almighty God, or possibly the God of abundance, abundant provision. Ushmi, Shem is name. Here, Ushmi, and my name, Yod Hey Vav Hey Adonai, Lo. The negative, no dati, verbal root yada to know, no dati, I was known. So lo no dati, I wasn't known, la hem, to them. It's interesting because some people would surmise from that, oh, they didn't actually know the name spelled yod hey vav hey. But when you read the stories in uh, the first book of the Torah, the book of Genesis, you actually see that they do address him by name. Sometimes they call him with uh, they they call him by name with the title Adonai uh, affixed to it. So apparently there was there was a, a bigger sense uh, in the sense of the meaning of his name that they didn't know him by. Vigam, and also Hakimoti. Verbrut kum means to get up or rise. Here, what is he talking about? Et briti, my brit. What is a brit? A covenant, a covenant agreement upon which a relationship is founded, uh, from which a relationship grows. It's a covenant relationship. So here we have this word. He 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 kumed. He 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 raised. His covenant, itam, with them. What does it mean to raise a covenant? Yeah, that's the, the Hebrew word for establishing a covenant. Latet, verbal root, there is natan, to give, because noon is a weak letter, it gets knocked off. I know 
that is hard when that happens. It's hard to identify the verbal root. You can be thankful that doesn't happen too often in Hebrew. Hebrew is a very consistent language. So here we have letate to give lahem. Thanks for watching this trailer. To get this whole talk in audio or video format, go to holylanguage.com and subscribe. I'll see you there.